Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so who's heard that the reef is doomed or do a lot of your friends think the reef is doomed? You've heard bad news about the reef? Yeah. Most of you, yeah. And of course that's right, because you see headlines like this, 93% of the reef bleached or 99% of the reef is at risk of vanishing by 2025 or that only 2% escape bleaching. So these are the things that are just continuously being pushed on to people and of course people think that the reef is doomed. But I've got some really wonderful news for you. Okay, so this is data, solid data about the amount of coral that's on the Great Barrier Reef. It's measured by the Australian Institute of Marine Science. Every year they survey about 100 of the 3,000 reefs and they look at the amount of coral on it and you can see that when you look at the coral cover from 1985, long time ago, it goes up and down but at the moment we've got record high coral cover. It doesn't get better than that, okay? So this is wonderful, wonderful news. And this is all despite having supposedly four massive bleach ev bleaching events in the last six years. So 2016, 17, 20, and 22, right? So supposedly we lost all this coral and yet we've got record high coral cover. So how does that work? How could we have lost all this coral? And remember, Coral takes a long time to grow. It takes five to 10 years for even the fastest growing coral to grow. So how could we have lost a lot of coral? 50%, 93%, all this type of stuff, if now we're at record high coral cover. So this is wonderful, wonderful news. And we're gonna discuss it in these, this series of four videos. Before we do that, we need to, you know, know what the reef is about. So, you know, it's up there in North Queensland. So this is the, uh, the coast of North Queensland. It's about 2,000 kilometres long. It's bigger than Victoria, all right? The reef is that big. It's almost as big as California in America or Germany. And it's made of 3,000 individual reefs. So there's 3,000 individual reefs and they're all mostly a long way from the coast. And so what does it look like? If you could look underwater, and this would be just one small part of it, this would be the coastline. And this is the deep water down at 4,000 metres water depth, really, really deep. And the reef sits on relatively shallow water, about 100 metres deep. And each of the reefs are like these red areas, and there's 3,000 of them, 50 to 100 kilometres off the coast. So if you actually look at them in more detail, they're 3,000 of these sort of like flat-topped hills, and they're all covered with living coral, and they're growing on literally the bodies of their dead ancestors, okay? So when coral dies, it doesn't rot like wood, it's like concrete, and they build up. So any ideas how old the reef is? Does anybody have even the faintest idea? A million years, yeah, well done. It's about a million years old, okay? Most of the time, this area is actually not covered with water. So if you go back 20,000 years, the sea level was a lot lower, and these were just flat top hills, right? but every time the water comes up, they build up all that coral that dies and lots of coral dies all the time. It builds up until you get these beautiful flat top hills. Now, there's 3,000 of those originally. How many of those 3,000 coral reefs do you think still have really good coral on them despite everything that's happened? How many of those 3,000? Any ideas? 2,900. 2,900? Nope, 3,000, all right? every single one of them. We haven't lost a single reef of the Great Barrier Reef. This is again really wonderful news. What does each of the individual reefs look like? Well they're, they're a few kilometres across, they're this flat topped area, a lot of coral sand made up of broken up uh, coral and then around the ridge, or the rim there's usually a lot of coral and various areas in between. And so there's lots of these and they're virtually all in extremely good condition. The thing that damages them the most actually is cyclones or hurricanes. So the reef is covered with coral and there's lots of different types. Very broadly there's these staghorn or plate corals that are easily smashed by cyclones. And then there's other ones like these great big uh, massive corals. And these live for a very long time. The other ones don't live more than a couple of decades. These live for may maybe centuries. And they can get to be as big as a car. That's how big as, or even bigger than that. And they're not damaged by a great deal. But there is no doubt that periodically huge amounts of coral will be killed. 
mostly by cyclones. You can lose the amount of coral on a small European country overnight with one big cyclone going through. But then there's starfish plagues and there's bleaching and all of these are entirely natural and they've been happening since forever. The reef is an incredibly dynamic system. It goes through crashes and recovery and crashes and recovery. And you can see that in this data from the Australian Institute of Marine Science. So if we look at the northern part of the Great Barrier Reef, this is the northern third, you see it fluctuates around. We had this big crash and then complete recovery. In fact, more than complete recovery. Or if you look at the central region, it goes up and down. It crashed here after a big cyclone, recovered, then crashed again, and then recovered again. So these are not systems that stay the same. They change all the time. So of course, there's often lots of coral dying, which gets onto the news. Or the southern region, you see it generally declined, then a big crash, Cyclone Hamish, and then recovered again. It's now at very high levels. Or possibly the most um, spectacular one of them all is this southern, very most southern sector of the reef, a big area. When the record started, it was very high. It went down to less than half. It then doubled and then halved and then tripled. You know, huge amounts of coral are dying all the time, slowly building up those reefs. So the thing changes a great deal as time goes on. All right, but nevertheless, if you look at the situation at the moment, we are at record high coral cover despite four massive bleaching events, those red arrows, which have occurred over the last six years. Now you'd think that was good news. You'd think that was good news, don't you reckon? Record high coral cover? No. Nope. According to a lot of these uh, science institutions, it's still bad news, right? And it's bad news, guess why? You'll never guess, you could never dream this up, because apparently it's the wrong type of coral that we've got, right? So what's the wrong type of coral? It's these beautiful plate and staghorn corals, which are actually the ones that tourists largely go to see. Apparently we've now got too much of these, and the reason is that these ones are most susceptible to bleaching and all the rest of it, and these are the ones that grow really quickly after a devastation. So what did they say after the 2016 bleaching events? Fair time ago, but that was supposedly a great big one where we lost supposedly a lot of coral. Well, this is what they said after that, right? Remembering at the moment they're saying we've got too much of this plate and staghorn coral, they said, fast-growing staghorn corals and tabular corals suffered a catastrophic die-off. Right, so this is the staghorn and bleaching, suffered a catastrophic die-off, transforming the three-dimensionality and ecological functioning of the reef, changing the reef forever as the intensity of climate change continues to escalate. All right, so then they were saying, we don't have enough of this plate and staghorn coral. And now they're saying, well, the reef sees record high coral, but it's highly vulnerable because guess what? We've got too much of this plate and staghorn coral, which supposedly was all killed four times in the last six years. So can you see the circular argument here? What's happened is that they said, well, all these corals are being killed due to climate change. We've had these four events. Now we've got more of this than we've ever had in the past, but now we've got too much of this because it will all be killed by climate change. So what I'd say to you is these people, um, you know, they can never see a good story. So what they're now saying is the rapid growth of coral cover appears to have come at the expense of the diversity of the coral on the reef, with most of the increase accounted for the fast growing branching corals, they call it a cropera, okay? These corals grow quickly after disturbances, but are very easily destroyed by storms, heat waves, crown of thorns, starfish. By increasing the dominance of those corals, the reef has become more vulnerable. Now you were thinking that record high coral cover might actually be a good thing, but no, it's actually now more vulnerable than it ever was before because we've got all this beautiful coral. These people, you know, everything about that, they've been saying the reef is doomed all this time. And of course, they've been proven that it's wrong and this is the best excuse that they can come up with. I sometimes think, you know the Harry Potter stories better than me. I think these people, they're like dementors, right? They just suck the joy out of life, right? 
Doesn't matter how good it is, they, you know, this is what dementors do. They, a dementor glories in decay and despair. They drain the peace, hope and happiness out of the air around them. Doesn't matter how good the coral is. They're not going to allow you to feel happy about this. Get, near, get too near a dementor and every good feeling, every happy, happy memory is sucked from you. And this is what I feel about the way the scientific institutions have used the Great Barrier Reef and the, the quite common death of parts of the Great Barrier Reef to drain the hope, especially out of youthful people, that there is no future for it. And of course, in the future, we are going to see more coral will die because it always dies and comes back. And every time that happens, they're going to suck that joy out of you. They're going to make sure that you never feel good about the reef. So what I say to you is the reef is presently at record high coral cover. It will come down for sure, but you must rejoice that actually the reef is in much better shape than you've been feeling before. And that there's a lot of people who are using the reef as a tool uh, for lots of other things and in the same process, depressing the youth. So that's the end of part one. Stay tuned for part two because we're going to show that the doom about the reef has been going on for a lot more than the last 10 or 15 years that you guys have been around. Thanks very much. What do you think future threats to the reef could be? The one that worries me is the direct effect of carbon dioxide dissolving in the water, changing what they, they sort of call the acidity or the pH. And they have done some experiments where when you do that, coral grows a bit slower. Um, but there's also a lot of other experiments that say that it doesn't grow slower. So I'm not really sure which way that will fall, but that certainly does worry me. Whereas the change in temperature due to climate change, I don't think is a big worry and the, the effect of the farmers. But that one, I think the jury is still out. Um, so there is re room for worry in that case. Why do you think they're using the reef as kind of a scapegoat? Yeah, good question. Um, well, uh, many of them, it's, they're not doing it deliberately as a scapegoat. They genuinely believe that the reef is damaged. I think a lot of the, the biologists who study the reef are emotionally attached to the reef, and you can understand why, because it's such a beautiful thing that when you see it dying, you can't help getting worried about it. So they're not, they're not doing anything deliberately evil or anything like that. I think there is a small number, maybe at the very top levels of the institutions that see it as a way of getting money for the institution. And also as, uh, because of course there's huge amounts of money now goes to save the reef. So there's a little bit of that that has, has crept in. But as we'll see later, I think the biggest problem is that it's really just a quality assurance problem, that people are just getting the science wrong for not necessarily bad reasons. Yeah. The video you just watched, is for a new education platform called True Arrow Academy of Critical Thinking, or TACT for short. TACT will be an alternative education resource platform that's non-woke and non-indoctrinating, with each lesson being a potential turning point in a young learner's understanding on a range of important topics. TACT will evolve into many hundreds of animations and filmed lessons written, run, and influenced by an exceptional mix of academic heavyweights teaching against the grain, with lessons encouraging open discussion, critical thinking, and debate. TACT's duty of care is to arm and shield you against modern, subversive, mainstream education. Supporters will be the lifeblood of TACT. If you would like to support this project, let's build this together at givesengo.com forward slash tact. Thank you so much.